and subscribe now do it so today i wanted to talk about a topic that is near and dear to my heart that is spark data frames versus spark sql which one should you use anytime you say anything bad about sql it's going to send the data engineers into a craze you know because if you like 50 percent of data engineers only know how to write sql which is not good which probably tells you where this talk is going but Spark is super popular. Um, I write it pretty much every day of my life for the last couple of years. I use both data frames and Spark SQL throughout my pipelines that I've been writing in production for a long time. And so a lot of people have asked me in the past, what should I use? Data frame API, Spark SQL, what's the difference? Does it matter? Should I care? I think you should care because personally I think that choosing Spark SQL exclusively or data frames exclusively is going to change your data pipelines, how they look, how they feel, how you run them and test them. Everything about it's going to be completely different. Um, in the beginning, what do I think? What's my answer? Spark SQL versus data frames. I think you should be somewhere in the middle. I think you should use both when you need to use them. What fits? I would say that you should probably lean towards data frames and then use Spark SQL where it makes sense in your situation. Let's just think about it for a minute. What do most SQL pipelines look like? I know that DBT is a thing and it's helped, but you know, honestly, pipelines that are mostly SQL based in reality, in the real, in the real world, they're out there in the wild are a mess most of the time. Why? Because when you use SQL for everything, you tend to conglomerate all logic. Your SQL queries quickly grow out of control, especially if you're using them for data transformations and not just for analytics. Um, and that causes a lot of issues because it becomes very hard to reuse that code. It becomes hard to debug and fix that code and no one can touch it because it's just SQL statements that grow with all sorts of CTEs, subqueries, case statements, and everything else going on, all they tend to conglomerate. Sure, there might be some people who can stick to the like clean mode where they're just writing a Spark SQL statement to do a thing and not, you know, end up adding a bunch of other things on it because it just makes it easy and you're already in there. So I'm going to add all my logic here. So all of a sudden you have a pipeline that's like maybe two Spark SQL statements with that are like huge and everything's going on in there and then something's wrong. You need to change stuff. You want to reuse the code, best practices, unit test. It really, it becomes very difficult and is not best practice. Whereas if you're using data frame API, you can write more like reusable code easier. Not that you can do that with Spark SQL, but it's going to be easier with a data frame API to write functions and encapsulate simple pieces of data frame logic that you can reapply to different parts of your ETL. And then you spark SQL where it makes sense. Let's look at an example here of what might a spark data frame pipeline look like if we were doing something simple. Okay, so here's an example. Say we want to work on some sales data, right? We read the sales data, we might have some logic that defines a product, right? It's looking at a product ID and if it's such and such it's saying it's product one if it's such and such it's saying it's product two right um, you can think about we could really this is very common stuff it makes sense it's very encapsulated we could write some unit tests to capture the business logic around this and make sure it never fails right um, maybe we're doing some aggregation simple group by aggregate sum you can see how you know, we could apply this to different columns and different transformations. Of course, this is a simple example, but you can see that it's modular. It's the logic is broken up. It's very easy to look at, very easy to test, to reuse this code, right, in general. And those are all good things. What do we most people do when they write a Spark pipeline? Well, of course, we're reading the same thing we did before, but then it comes to Spark SQL, all of a sudden we're probably going to start doing some case statements. Um, and at the same time, we're going to go, oh, I don't want to write, so I'm just in here working, so I'm just going to not only do the business logic in this query, I'm going to also throw in some aggregation here and just do it all at the same time. It's all good. Whatever, we move on, right? And it's like, 
to a lot of people, this looks normal, right? They're like, there's nothing wrong with doing this. And in one sense, I could say, sure, maybe there's nothing inherently wrong with it. But I think in the long term, in reality, what happens is that someone else comes to work on this code and they start adding things to this. And it's sure you could kind of template the SQL code and pass in columns, but this just is a bad look, right? It's a bad feel. All of a sudden, it's hard to understand what's going on here because we've got aggregation, we have business logic that's checking things, case statements. Not that those things are bad, but it's like if I'm writing a pipeline that needs to be reusable, testable, and simple logic to understand that's extensible, what should I do? Well, I would argue that this is probably this example, you know, would be an example where, sure, you want to do your aggregation in Spark SQL, that's fine, it makes sense. But, you know, maybe your business log is you could keep in the data frame API. That way you could unit test it, keep things separate, and understand what's going on. Um, I would say this is just generally what tends to happen in my experience. Um, so does it matter? Yeah, I think it matters because people are humans and they're going to take the easiest route. And I think that people that glom onto SQL, which I have, I've used SQL every day. I've used it for a lot of my career, and it's a great tool for certain things, but people need to remember that the data frame is good, and it can enforce you to use best practices. It's easier and makes more sense for you to break up logic, to unit test things. It's going to make your life a whole lot easier. Can you do those things with Spark SQL? Yes. Do people do them? Maybe one out of ten at most. What can data frame people learn about Spark SQL? Well, they can learn to use CTEs. They can learn to do aggregations maybe because a lot of people can read sort of aggregations like group buys and sums, averages. It probably looks better in Spark SQL and it makes sense, you know, rather than using the data frame API. I use Spark SQL for that sort of stuff, for subqueries, things like that. If you need some sort of logic like that, yeah, probably use Spark SQL because it looks, it's easier to read. You can know what's going on, look at that code right away. Um, but on the other side, Spark SQL folks need to remember that the importance and ease of unit testing with the data frame API, making more code more module and reusable and breaking up logic so less bugs happen. These all are important things to remember about Spark SQL and data frame. So who's the winner? Who should you choose? You should use you choose what matters to you in that moment and what's the best engineering practice long term. If you're trying to go for reusable code that's unit testable, extensible, uh, using best practices, you use default to the data frame API when it makes sense, especially for business logic. It'll make your life easier. You can unit test things. Mm -hmm. If you're doing aggregations, things like that, definitely put them in Spark SQL. If you're doing manipulations, update, delete statements on say a Delta table with like a merge statement, of course those you should use the Spark SQL in my opinion because it reads easier. You can understand what's going on and people are used to looking at that sort of logic with SQL. So it makes sense to use Spark SQL for that. But as far as transformations, things like that, I would suggest stick to the data frame API. You can test it easier makes more sense keep things broken up write functions in a way that can be reused so there you have it